Hi there. Um, I'm really excited to be uh, part of the DevPost uh, AWS Raise Up Buildathon. Um, it's exciting to have the opportunity to try out something I've been meaning to do for so many months. Um, what we do uh, day to day is work with charities and NGOs and help them get projects shipped. Often we're building things on uh, AWS where we're working with charities with really constrained time budgets and actual budgets. And what that means is those charities are always briefing us to focus on um, the, the most value we can get out each uh, day we work with them. So often that results in us working and focusing on feature delivery. Um, and when we're doing this in an agile way, things like uh, analytics and metrics always get bumped to the bottom of those lists because the charities really don't have time to uh, trade off something that would help a beneficiary over something that would help them get better insight and be um, able to understand more about what the users are doing with their services they're building. What happens then as a result is we get to an end of a project and um, there's no room to put metrics in, but they then need something to kind of understand the, the scale of what they're doing and uh, where parts of the, the app or solution are working best. And often these uh, apps could be maybe only four or five URLs in terms of surface area. So it's a really small, um, uh, say, self-help process or it's a fundraising um, funnel or a campaign page. And as a result, there's not a huge amount of analytical insight they need, it's just some key statistics. So putting in a Google Analytics snippet um, can be really problematic as a solution for this because then they have to understand GDPR uh, and they have to understand privacy concerns. They have to then learn a whole, um, whole new tool. And often what they really want is say the goals part of analytics, which means then we'd have to have developer time or have them understand how to write snippets of code, do event, management, all that kind of stuff. It just takes too long as a process. Um, so for months we've been frustrated with this and wanted to have an alternative and the, the challenge has really given us a kick to give this a try. So what we've tried to do is um, work out a way that we leverage all of the amazing functionality and power that's in uh, the AWS stack and see what that leaves us with to create an alternative for this painful loop we end up in on the end of a lot of projects. So enter Funalytics. Um, what we've tried to do here is create a, a process um, that uses the AWS stack, allows us to get those lean analytics that we need in a fun way, uh, and maybe also um, kind of leads to uh, the clear funnel of action. So like what are the key URLs, what's the drop off, some key statistics like that that a charity would need. So then hopefully we can see the end of all these annoying privacy screens that just get bolted on without really thinking about a project and really decrease the experience for beneficiaries. It trains them just to auto-click away on privacy rights um, and actually is one more step kind of removing them from the, the value they need from these key services that charities are offering. So diving into the technical then of what does it do? It's a really simple uh, Lambda. Um, so you can kind of see from uh, some of the code here, that there's a, a few parameters that we're just receiving as a, an API ends uh, webhook. An endpoint that just takes some basic details. So in this case, what we're just collecting is uh, an SID, just so we can separate this from other projects and do a little bit of validation. Um, a path, so what, what page is being requested, a host name it's from, uh, some bits about the event and user resolution, things that are useful for testing. So for example, is this the landing page? Is this the uh, the part where they're signing to join a campaign, or is this the part where um, they're requesting help for a certain uh, crisis they're in? Um, we can then like track some referrer data that can be useful, pass on parameters, and all of the client side code that would be unique to that project handles the collection of that data and just submitting it to this endpoint. Um, and often that's quite trivial on the client side because there's JavaScript running almost certainly in, in those projects. So it just becomes a few lines of, of capture we're just getting some of those key details together and then submitting it off to this webhook. Um, and because it's all part of the same AWS hosted project, there's no um, extra GDPR footprint for the project, which is great. Um, then what we've got uh, <laughs> mirrored somewhere around here is um, uh, a little bit of code that lets us either save this to S3 as a small.json file, or we can save it to DynamoDB. And that was one of the great things about the challenge is that there were so many products that would allow us to achieve what we're looking to do that we ended up with this, this kind of 
this code, this code here is like uh, about 46 lines for the core library. And the other two Python files are just handling S3 or just confirming the shape of the model for the database. So in any of the future projects, we could change maybe four or five lines and have whole new metrics that we're capturing and submitting, which is fantastic. So what that looks like then is that from the client side, you'd submit the data. So we can see a little Postman screenshot here where there's the endpoint and I'm getting back the success message uh, from, the, from the Lambda endpoint um, saying, great, you know, data's been received. And if not, we can use the, the logs from the Lambda to work out what's going on. But with these kind of things, once the code is set up in place with the project, it just runs and works. So once we've got that first success message after testing this in the project, uh, we're off and away. Um, so what does this look like then and how are we using the different Amazon products? Um, so the, the Lambda is obviously the workflow, so we've got our kind of API endpoint um, that's calling the, the Lambda function. Um, and that then takes that, stat data, that statistical data, saves it then in, from the endpoint to, to S3 or Dynamo. Um, so you can see here all of the um, those little tiny JSON files being accumulated in the bucket, um, which is great because then we can you know, manage those um, and, and do lots of things with them. Um, we've tried a few different shapes, so we had a play with glue, and that would be really useful for them batch tidying these up in the long run. So maybe when the campaign has reached the end of its life cycle, we could try to transform that into something that's a bit cleaner than lots and lots of JSON files. Um, but this is a great way of getting running fast, right? That's the beauty of um, cloud platforms. We can get things out quickly, um, save developer time, save the charity's money, but still have the flexibility to, to not make a mess by going fast. We then we used Athena to pull all of that together. So we created a couple of um, tables here. So <laughs> you can see um, we've got a table for a DynamoDB shape and one from S3 Direct, which was something that I learned in the process uh, that we can query all of that directly from S3. So potentially cut out some of the glue and, and um, Dynamo bits, which was a really interesting way of uh, thinking about AWS that I hadn't quite seen where there's um, different combinations of products could lead to different shapes. I think previously my mindset was that there were certain platforms that had to be used in a certain way and you just put them together. But really there was like three or four ways that we could have built this workflow. And that was exciting to see. Um, and that's partly where the funnel for Funnelytics comes from. Is there's lots of ways of funneling this data around. Um, and this was one that we saw. So a really simple query like this, like selecting all the data from that Lambda table, uh, means that then we have a Lambda data source, sorry, an Athena data source that we can then put into QuickSight. And then in a couple of clicks, I was able to pull together some graphs to show what the top URLs are, what the number of uh, hits were through that API. Um, and then with a few filters and um, created parameters, you could take, say, the query string from the end of the URL, which you'd stuff with event data, and then easily pull together a table to show like a funnel of um, where the users were within that app. And that would then drive insight for, say, the next sprint as to what was required. So it's a really quick run through, but I think what's exciting about this is we now know that with a with, you know, 46 lines of Python and uh, an hour or two, we can then sidestep a huge amount of privacy concerns for charities, get them the, the simplified insight they need. Um, and as we're already deploying to AWS for the project, um, there's, there's no difference really in cost or um, how that's gonna impact the charity, except for uh, we now get like a really clean shareable dashboard of just the key things they need to worry about in the project because we built those views for them. I'm really excited. I hope you like the entry and um, yeah, enjoy watching all these videos. Take care.